Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Games for Scratch, and today we are talking about uh, Gravit Designer. Now this is kind of like the program we touched on a couple of days ago, Affinity Designer. It is a vector-based graphics application. Now this is available in both online and downloadable formats. It's available in a free form. We'll get into the costing a little bit, but there is a completely usable free version of this available. And if you download it, it's available for most major platforms. Windows, Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS are the predefined options there. And as I mentioned, you can run it directly in your browser if you so wish. So what exactly is this guy? Well, it is a vector-based application like Affinity Designer, like Inkscape, um, Adobe Illustrator, and so on. And it is for creating drawings and graphics out of shapes, basically. It's very useful for mocking up UIs, doing flows or presentation, or for getting that vectory graphic kind of look out. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at Gravit Designer, a very quick hands-on look at it. Then we'll look at specifically what is new in the just released 2019-2 update. And then we'll finish things off by taking a quick look at the pricing model. So if you want, you can jump forward to those particular details if you are already familiar with Gravit. If you're not familiar with Gravit, well, let's introduce you. So you can come in here, you can do a download and get it for various different platforms, as I mentioned earlier. Or you can click Start Now, which will bring you here. Now, of course, you're going to need some kind of account. I've hooked mine up to my... Um, like Hotmail account or something like that. There's nothing really more you need to do other than you sign up and then um, you register and you verify your email and that's about it. So we've got here, we got various different design options. We can design to a page size. We can do predefines like a blog cover or website sizes. You got predefined things or we've got things for various different devices. So you could design it for Google Pixel 2 or 2XL, the iPhone size, the Apple Watch, whatever. Or you can use a variety of templates, things like blog graphics, A4, Facebook post, and so on. So I'm just going to come back here to new design, and we'll make it for, um, say, an iPad. So there we've got our default size. And what you can do now, uh, you can actually do quite a bit here. Now, this is really useful for, you know, if you're trying to blog a, a website or um, you want to design a user interface, definitely useful there. But, of course, you can also use it to define shapes and create that vectory graphic kind of look. And let's start with that simple. So we can come up here, we can do things like... Uh, create a shape. So I can create a circle in the world and then we can do things with it. You've got control over if it's open, if it's closed, if it's pie shaped, so on. Uh, we can change the opacity, the amount that you can see through it. We can have different blending modes, how it interacts with other things in the world. Um, or we can have a predefined style. We can come in here, we can give it a color. So let's make this guy red. And that's kind of it. The cool thing is you can also do special effects right here. So say, for example, we want to do a drop shadow on it. Let's drop that out eight pixels on the Y axis and four pixels on the x-axis, and there you see you get a drop shadow out of it. Now, as it is with any um, vector-based application, you also can do Boolean operations on them. So I'm going to come up here, and we'll create another shape. We'll create a rectangle like this. Now what I'm going to do is shift-collect both of them, and you'll see that we can come up here, go to Modify, and then we can go to Create Compound Shapes, and you can do things, create a Boolean edit. For, for example, I'm going to do a Subtract, and you see we just cut the first shape out of the second shape. And that's kind of how it particularly works. You see, you've got a number of different layers here. You've got your compound shape that you've created. You can create many more layers. You can delete layers completely. We, then we start layering things on top of other layers. So we could do, for example, a bit of a shadow over this guy if we so wished. And that is how you create your graphics in this, um, this setup. We've also got freeform pen tools, like we can create a path and basically just start drawing the shape. Um, I think that'll close it. There you go. So you can create whatever kind of uh, thing you want in the particular world. And of course, you can go into pointer mode. We can select individual aspects. We can move things around. Uh, we can resize the individual pieces of it. We've got a knifing tool. You've got also a freehand drawing tool. So if you want to get more of a painterly look, um, you can do your shapes like that, kind of easy on the fly. Again, you have all of those particular special effects available for each object you create. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of everything. So let's go here to select mode. And then we're going to go ahead and delete. Now, another key area that this really shines is you got these libraries over here and a huge selection of things and, and images built in. So right now I am in the uh, Unsplash Photos. We can break this down by various different categories. So if we needed pictures or stock images for, say, doing a, an image title screen or whatever, they are available here. So let's grab that one, drag this into our scene. And there you see the end result. I'll do a control and a middle mouse button to scroll that down. So let's bring the size of this guy down like that. Make sure that it all fits on our scene. So there is a simple shape in the world. So now let's say we want to populate it with something else. Let's go back up here to the top and let's pick a uh, shape. I think I want to, no, no, I don't want a shape. I want a illustration. But as you see, you've got all these different kind of shapes available. So if you want to do a program flow or whatever, you could do it that way. 
And you'll see you've got a number of different illustrations, various different colors, different styles. You've got realistic versus linear, multicolored, solid, x-ray, and so on. Or, of course, you can import an SVG and do whatever you want. So here we go. We're just going to bring in the simple uh, compound shape for a sign. And then if we wanted, we could come in here. Uh, select that text, for example. Let me come over here. Let's go to the text tools on this guy. You can see it's actually got really solid text tools as well. Makes working with text quite easy. So we could drop a text in the world right there. We'll go, let's add a uh, Toronto. All right, select all that. Let's size that guy down to say eight pixels instead. Oh, that's way too small. Uh, but here you can see we got it shaped in the world. We're in select mode. Let's size that out so it actually fits on our shape. Drag that guy back up. And then you've got control over the fonts for it. There are a number of fonts out of the box. You can see right here. Unfortunately, there's no real-time preview. But let's say I'll go with the Pacifico font. And there you see it will update after the fact. Of course, we can change the color. And we've got things like, oops, it's not a drag. Using the wrong program here. So I pick, and then there, I'll select the font color. There is our original font coloring going on. I probably don't want to size that back up. So let's make that guy 16 pixels. Drag it up, fit, all right, there, all right. So there you see positioning and having fonts in your, your world, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, easy to work with. And that's kind of it. That's the basis of Gravit. There's obviously a whole lot more to it. There's a lot more um, things to the, the layering and the tools and the stuff you can work with. You can define your own custom shape and then save it as a symbol and reuse those symbols. Um, and then when you are done, you've got the ability to uh, export out to PNG, JPEG, or SVG if you want to stay in vector format, or you can bring it out as a PDF file. And then we've got some advanced options. At the same time, we can also import uh, now they, with the new version, they've actually added the ability to load an image directly and have that as the basis of your design. But in a nutshell, this is Gravit. It's very straightforward. And if this is the kind of graphical look you're going for, uh, again, it's very simple to get started because you could just go on the website and check it out. Um, You've got, you can switch into, say, I, I want to do an outline mode, draws a, runs a little faster, no color or graphic details going on. We've got a few other options there. Uh, you've got snapping tools, rulers, and those kind of things going on. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a clean, straightforward, pretty well-functioning, uh, good performance. Let's zoom in, see how the performance goes that way. It's pretty solid, so I got no real major complaints on, on any level about using it that way. Uh, there are some weird anomalies, like for example, this guy is now rasterized and I don't know why it's not updating or fixing it. Um, but uh, for the most part, it kind of just works as intended. So if you want like a, to check out a vector graphics program and for some reason, like this one is a whole lot easier to work with than say Inkscape in terms of learning it and getting started, but it's probably also less powerful. But if you don't need that power, then this might be an ideal tool for you. So now let's go back to that 2019.2 thing I was mentioning about. So they just released this new version of Gravit Designer. And let's look at what the new features are in 2019-2. So this was released June 5th. So uh, about almost a week ago. Um, they have, uh, let's see, it's a dozen, no, it's 14 languages are supported now. 12 new ones were added, including German, Spanish, French, Italian, Polish, Russian, Chinese simplified, Chinese traditional, Czech, Dutch, Japanese, and Turkish for a total of 14 languages now. On top of that, the correct language is automatically detected based off your browser language. So you should get the default by, uh, just by going to the page, it should be in your language of choice. Unsplash, which is the photo uh, um, that I got this background from when we worked with it here, this guy right here, that came from Unsplash. A photo integration to give even more options to work with your project without needing to leave Graphic Designer. You can now add photos directly from the Unsplash photos. Um, let's see what else. Uh, okay, how to do it. So we've got improvements to simplify adding images to your design. JPEGs and pings can now be directly opened using file open instead of having to do file import place. Uh, generally improved PDF importing, uh, multiple improvements to duplicating pages in multi-page mode, and interface font of Gravit Designer no longer includes um, acrylic uh, characters, and then a number of bug fixes since their last version in May 21st of 2019. So that is what is new in 2019-2. If you're interested in learning more and you want all the links to everything we discussed, click the linked article below, and I will link out to all of these things available for you. Now, finally, let us talk for a moment about price. And obviously that is going to be important to people. So there is Graphic Designer and Designer Pro. With the Designer free version, you get 500 megs of cloud storage, 
PDF exporting at 72 and 150 DPI, and RGB color space only. You can't work offline, uh, so you need to have an internet connection to the site. Advanced export options are not available, and there is no version history. For 49 or yeah, 49 Canadian a year, which is probably about 40 US, probably 39 US, somewhere in there. You get unlimited cloud storage, PDF export up to 300 DPI. You can work in color spaces, including CMYK and HSB in addition to RGB. It does have the ability to work offline. So if you really hate that whole um, having to work in a browser constantly connected kind of thing, that is a pro feature. You have advanced exporting options and version history. In terms of those advanced exporting options, they are, let's see, if we come up here, we go to export, advanced export, you will see you have additional things, different additional choices to available. Um, yeah, that seems to be about it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's, um, oh, what are we talking about? I was about to say Affinity. No, graphic, um, graphic Designer that we dealt with here, available at designer.io. Again, you can run it directly in the browser or you can download um the standalone version. It also comes with a 30 day pro trial. When you first sign up, you've got the option of checking it out free for 30 days, which is what I currently have enabled. And you also notice over here, you have the ability, it is tab based. So if we go ahead and create another design, oh, it scrolled down. I really hate that. Uh, it will be tabbed across the top. So you can work with multiple documents if you so wish. And that's it. That is Gravit Designer, another vector-based application, another online, but in this case, also with an offline installed version uh, tool. I think that's sort of becoming more and more prevalent and more and more of the future things are going to run in your browser. And like I said, that has some advantages and it has some disadvantages, certainly. And obviously at the free tier, one of those disadvantages is obviously you're going to need to be connected to work on your documentation. And that is obviously going to be a limiting factor for some people. And at the $50 a year, Canadian or $40 US, pretty reasonably priced. Um, let me know what you think on the whole. Uh, are you already using a vector graphics tool, something like Affinity Designer or Inkscape or um, Adobe Illustrator? And where does this fit in the spectrum of tools? Is there any interest here or is this either too simple or uh, you don't like the uh, browser interface or whatever? Is there a reason why you wouldn't check out something like Affinity Designer? Let me know these things in the comments down below. And if you are a user and you want to either sing the praises or you want to sing the hatred of this application, let me know those things comments down below as well. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.